guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and welcome to week update number 27. Uh, we've got a lot of various things to talk about, and uh, we've got a pretty good show for you here this week. So, uh, uh, a lot of incoming, a lot of outgoing. This, this, this is a, kind of a mail call, and talk about a few other things. So, uh, just uh, sit back and enjoy the show. No machining. If you're here for that, time to get out. Uh, first, we're going to talk about a road trip that I did. Um, I went to go see a fellow YouTuber. Uh, goes by the name of Mike Dittman, and uh, you should probably go check his channel out. He's a he's a gunsmith, and he likes to uh, he makes muzzle brakes, and uh, some very nice ones. You know, I, I was up visiting him in his shop, and uh, we were doing a tool exchange. I had some stuff for him, and. Uh, uh, he had some stuff for me, so I, I did a road trip. It was a pretty long drive, uh, but I did a turnaround that day um, up to Northern California. And I picked up a super spacer from him. Uh, here, let's go take a peek at that. So, that's a pretty nice super spacer. Uh, that's an 8 inch um, chuck on there. It's an adjust true back. It's got the four adjustment screws to take the uh, to get rid of the run out, and uh, it's got a masking plate inside at 15 degree increments when the lever's flipped. So uh, pretty nice. Uh, I'm looking forward to using it. And Mike, thanks for that. Um, on that same road trip, on my way back home, I uh, <laughs> I swung by uh, Ray Canelia's. <clears throat> now. Uh, we, we spent a lot of time in the shop and time just flew and here's a little bit of video of us just kind of goofing off in the shop and uh, cutting up so let's let's go take a peek at that <laughs> very nice look at that oh there's one let me zoom in on that oh yeah there's a there, look at there's a chip hey Adam I found one All right, so uh, me and Ray had a pretty good time. We hit it off immediately. It's like we've been buddies forever. We've never met face to face, but uh, yeah, just two peas in a pod. Had a real good time. Um, on that same trip, I missed uh, Chuck Vanetta. Uh, he was off picking up a mill, or so he thought he was picking up a mill. And uh, so I, I missed Chuck. So he was either picking up a mill or curing cancer or doing stem cell surgery or splitting the atom somewhere but he was entirely too busy to come see me over at Mike's all right Chuck maybe I'll catch you next time all right next up um, I did a service <clears throat> on the Boyer Schultz the surface grinder uh, the coupling was bad so the motor had to come out anyways when I pulled the motor out found a bunch of gunk figured as long as I was that far my spindle was a little growly, just sounded dry to me. And uh, dug into it a little deeper, um, no measurable run out or in play, but I wanted to, uh, you know, just freshen up the grease and get a good look in there and see what's going on. And as it turns out, the bearings are serviceable on those units. The uh, dust shields uh, are held on with uh, circlips. So let's take a look at the, the grease and the, and the caps and everything that from taking it apart. Okay, so pretty easy to work on. Um, the circlips pop right out and you get in there with a pair of scribes and just tilt that uh, little seal out of there and you're, uh, you can get in there and, and get some solvent in there and wash out all the old waxy grease. Uh, that grease was just thick and horrible like a paste and I uh, got some, uh, some uh, spindle grease in there. Uh, the trick to those is filling, you're going to want to fill up about one third. You want to leave an air gap in there otherwise you'll skate the bearing at the high RPM. So high RPM bearings, don't pack them full of grease. Never pack them full of grease. Always leave an air gap, about two thirds air gap. Um, all I do to uh, pack those kind of bearings, I use a Ziploc bag. Put some grease in it, like a like a cake decorator, 
and just barely nip the end off of that thing and you can get in there and just squeeze the grease right into that bearing. Uh, you could use a, a hypodermic needle on a grease gun too, but uh, it's such a small amount, it's not even worth filling a grease gun to do those. So uh, let's, let's take a look at the results. Let's go listen to the results. I just let the mic on the camera pick up the noise of the spindle. Uh, I didn't shoot any before video audio, so uh, you have nothing to compare it to, but it was growly before, and let's go listen to it now. Okay, and here's uh, the grinder after service, after we service the spindle. And I'm just gonna be quiet and let the microphone pick up everything. Spindle is very quiet. Uh, you're getting a lot of fan noise out of the back. I did clean this fan out. I'm getting an awful lot of air movement out of the back now. Uh, behind here is a cooling fan, and it was just packed with grit and grime from the last time I had it apart. So, simple bearing service made a world of difference. So there it is, the Boyer Schultz is good for another 30 years, hopefully. But uh, I priced the bearings while they were out, they're still available, um, about 180 bucks each. Uh, they're not angular contact, they're just a uh, deep groove bearing and a high tolerance uh, bearing. But uh, I opted not to replace them, I probably had two hours into pulling that spindle out and re-greasing it and putting it back in. So it's no big deal to do it if I, if I do decide to give it new bearings in the future. Okay, so that's it for the Boyer Schultz. Uh, everything's all back together. Let's go check the run out and in play on that spindle now. Okay, so with our <clears throat> recently, I think it doesn't want to focus. Okay, so with our recently uh, uh, packed uh, spindle bearings were set up on the arbor and all we're going to do now is measure in play and I'm going to just pull with my hand and then I'm going to try to get it to focus which it's not there it is so a tenth above I'm going to let go and I'm going to push so plus or minus uh, one tenth on in play and uh, I've taken as much error out of the equation by putting my mag base directly on the spindle. I didn't want to be looking at the tower flexing and put, you know, put it down to the bed. So we want to eliminate as, as much flexing as we can. So mag base on the spindle, measuring to the spindle. So uh, we've got a tenth of uh, in play. Uh, let's check the run out. <clears throat> let's pop that arbor off of there and check the run out. Okay, and the arbor's off, and we're just on the uh, on the raw spindle taper. <clears throat> I'm trying to get you around to see this gauge. It's in kind of a weird spot. But again, we're on the, uh, the actual spindle housing with the mag coming over the top with, a, with an arm. So we've eliminated uh, sources of air by coming off the table. And uh, we're just going to spin... Uh, Spin the arbor by or the uh, spindle by hand here, and you can see some needle movement, but it's less than a tenth. And now we're going to take them. We're just going to. I'm just going to take this and push it straight up and straight down, uh, and see if we can indicate anything on it at all, as far as up and down movement. And I'm bearing down pretty hard. Now I'm pushing up pretty hard. And again, I can see needle movement, but less than a tenth and uh, anything tighter than that that's beyond my measuring capabilities but uh, pretty happy with the uh, with the results of the uh, of the spindle bearing uh, repack all right all right so uh, less than a tenth in uh, in run out and less than a tenth in uh, in play and up and down play, whatever you call that up and down play, I guess I'll call it right now, but uh, 
those are the three checks that I did on the uh, on the spindle and the arbor. Um, next up, uh, it's all my mail calls, and we got a few in. <clears throat> Some more from uh, Randy Richard. Got my stickers. There's sticker mania going on right now. There's another one, Mr. Herb Blair. So you guys appreciate it. Uh, the back window of my truck is getting very full. I'm starting to look like a rolling billboard, but I, which I don't mind. Uh, I am in the process of redoing my whiteboard. <clears throat> I actually have a sticker I can show you. Hang on a sec. These are not available to anyone but me. Okay, so we've got a Barzi Industrial. Uh, gonna go across the top of a whiteboard. And then anyone that sent me doubles um, of the stickers, you know, more than one, I am going to decorate my whiteboard across uh, the top and possibly down the sides if I run out of room. But uh, I am going to uh, duplicate my sticker collection on a whiteboard. I just need a larger whiteboard. So I'm in the market for that right now. But uh, those are my plans for the whiteboard to doll it up a little bit and uh, give, give you guys something to look at. <clears throat> Oh, what's next on the list? Oh, um, there's a gentleman, that, a fellow YouTuber, also over on Facebook. Uh, his name is Mike Galusha. And uh, I just posted over on Machining uh, YouTube that I was in the market for a BXA setup for my lathe. I'm, I, whatever knucklehead set up that lathe, it, it came with an AXA on it, which most of you know AXA you're limited to half inch tooling, which means if you're gonna use C and MG, you gotta make your own tools. So all of that just kind of multiplies and sucks. Someone went cheap, they put an AXA on it, but the machine will take a BXA, it'll take either one. But now we're capable of running 5 8 tooling. So I posted on Machining YouTube, said I'm in the market, looking for a BXA, anything, you know, tool post holders, whatever I'm collecting. And he said, hey, I got a, I got a, uh, a BXA I'll, I'll send over to you. And it turns out he sent me a parting holder too. And I, uh, it came in. But here, let me show it to you. So this is not the handle that came on it. But BXA tool post, made a new handle, had an, uh, or actually made a knob. Uh, on the uh, on a little radius grinder or a radius uh, tool for the for the lathe, um, so made those out of stainless. It matches all my other stuff. But uh, Mike, thank you for the uh, tool post holder, and he even had a parting blade holder he threw in there that fits. So I got my first tool post holder, and I had a parting blade that dropped right in, ready to go. Now uh, I am still collecting BX8. Um, Tool holders. So until that collection is complete, my uh, AXA isn't available in my AXA set. But it will be available soon. So if any of you guys need an AXA set, uh, that's coming up. All right. So let me put that out of here. So Mike Galusha, get over there and. Uh, uh, take a look at his channel. He's, he's doing some pretty interesting stuff. He's got some very nicely produced and nicely edited videos. Uh, easy to watch. Just uh, It just kind of flows seamlessly. So he's doing a real good job over there. Uh, go check him out. Uh, next up on our outgoing, we had uh, punches. Randy Richard did the punches. Uh, Stan uh, hardened and ground them. And we sent them off to Razor Ray. Now Razor Ray is going to get with Tom Lipton and they're guess they're going to try to break them. Okay, we'll check the points, see if I did good on our on our 60 degree point or not. Uh, we'll check that pin punch to see how it holds up, hardening wise, smacking it with a hammer or whatever. So, good times. Uh, next up, um, on incoming, I had uh, uh, my A-Bomb 79 shirt came in. Let's take a look at that. So that's pretty cool, right? It's got the little one here in the front, big one in the back. Awesome. Uh, also got my second version of the Ox Tool shirt. Let's take a look at that. 
and so new and improved Ox Tool Shirt. So good times. Uh, new logo's real crisp. The little fuzzies around it. Some of you like the fatigue look. I I just wanted my shirt as the manufacturer and the designer intended. Uh, in this case, the designer is Tom. Uh, I want whatever he came out of his brain, whether it be distressed or crisp or whatever. So I got my second shirt. Um, next up, oh, let's get out of these things. I'm not going to wear them out in the shop. I don't want to mess them up. They're still good shirts. I have shirts throughout their lifetime slowly degrade until they turn into shop shirts. These are not shop shirts yet. So uh, let's get back in a Bar Z shirt. Okay, and that's better. Um, next up, I sent an email to Noga. I wanted to know, I, I requested a catalog and uh, you know any, any kind of information on all their products. Um, I was unaware that they do misting and cooling and, and you know they do flood coolant and mist coolant. Uh, I was unaware of that and I just I asked them for an entire product catalog and uh, they sent me a kind of a nice wall poster over there and uh, you know there's some uh, indicator holders that I didn't have that I wanted to try out and you know over this time I've collected enough where I can do a decent review. So let's go around the bench, and, and we're, all we're going to look at today is uh, indicator holders um, and the types that, that Noga offers and what they're, what they're capable of and uh, their, you know, their features and stuff. So let's go over the bench and take a look at indicator holders. Hey guys, welcome over to the bench. And I'm, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a review on a, on a few uh, indicator arms. My uh, collection has grown of, of Noga indicator arms. And uh, I was going to show you what the advantages and disadvantages of some of them are. Uh, the first one we're going to look at <clears throat> uh, is the NF uh, series, uh, which has just got a small permanent magnet. The magnet does not turn off and on, and uh, there's no fine adjust on the top, but it does have a very unique fine adjust on the base. And I'm going to show you what's unique about that. And as a millwright, I find that this is going to be very handy. Uh, because of, the, because of the size of the magnet, first of all, it's got a very small magnet. And there's the width of it. And uh, it's got an adjuster right here, but I'm going to show you what that adjuster also does. We can turn this and loosen it. And now that thing swings 360 degrees all the way around. And I'm going to show you what that's capable of. Um, I'm going to stick it down here to the, to the table. And let me show you one thing first. Ah, man, that thing really sticks. Uh, it's it's not really a v-groove at the base uh, but it do, does have two raised magnets uh, with a center hollow section so it, it would probably snap onto a shaft very nicely I can't wait to do a pump alignment with this and uh, line up a shaft coupling um, you know we'll see how that goes but uh, yeah quite the sticky little magnet and uh, we're just gonna put a uh, Oh, we're going to put a 15015 uh, uh, little test indicator on here, just a little Mitsutoyo. And I'm probably glaring you out. Yeah, I probably am. Okay. Let's get down to the table surface here. And let's get our probe reasonably parallel with the table surface and tighten down. And you know, this is pretty much everything you've come to expect from Noga, good and solid. And now what we're going to do is we're going to tighten here and we're, see now we're tilting down and we've got dial movement there. All right. But now what's unique is, um, now that's on a horizontal surface, but let's say I wanted to check a, maybe a vertical surface. And I know you're not going to be able to read the gauge here, but I'm going to come over here like this. and tighten up my unit. But now I'm taking this, I'm, I'm gonna swing this over to the side here. And see now I've got movement in and out in this direction. And it's the same thing. I mean, I can, move, I can just move my, my uh, uh, fine adjust over to this side and see now I'm moving it away. Any, you know, you can you can position this thing 360 degrees and move that arm in any direction you want. 
Uh, and I'd never seen this before. Never knew it was available. You see, it, see it's kind of swinging away on this axis now. So whatever direction I swing this fine adjust, that's what direction it, the uh, uh, indicator swings in. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to reposition your magnet. A lot of times space is a limitation and you've, you've got a, a very small surface to get into. So this is uh, quite handy. Didn't know anything like this was available and I can't wait to use it out in the field on, uh, on pumps and gear drives and such. But I'll let you have another good look at that. And uh, here, let me loosen up the fine adjust. That's the only way this thing swings. After you've, after you've turned it in and started the adjustment, you can't really turn it. So you just loosen it all the way and it, it swings freely uh, 360 degrees all the way around. So uh, pretty slick little unit. Didn't know anything like that existed. Uh, the arm is what we're used to, the same Noga quality. Uh, nice and solid. Um, when you release it, it releases. When you lock it, man, it locks. So uh, pretty awesome. All right, so that's, uh, that's the NF uh, series, which includes the NF1030 and the NF1033. And here's another thing this one's capable of. Uh, a, a, a plain old dial indicator fits in these. Um, Noga has that nice uh, universal head right here that takes the dovetail and the uh, um, and the standard uh, dial indicator base. So up against a wall, uh, we've got adjustment there, which is nice. And again, on a horizontal surface, we can do the same thing with that. Now I know you can't see it here, but uh, uh, we can get down to a horizontal surface pretty easily. And just by taking our handle here, We've, we've got we've got movement there. So uh, pretty handy little uh, swing tool and nice little holder, you know, it, and the magnet is strong. We, we haven't uh, uh, had any need to move that around. I think on a lathe, you know, some of the ways on a lathe are kind of small or some of the, you know, little narrow surfaces in front of the way where you'd want to stick that on maybe on the Maybe you'd want to stick that on the gear rack for the uh, uh, for driving the carriage or something, uh, but it's nice and narrow and it would stick on there really well. So uh, pretty pretty good little universal holder. All right, let's move on. Okay, next up is uh, actually we're coming up on one of my favorites, and I've been using this around the shop for a long time. Uh, it's the NF sixty one zero zero three, and it's just a mag base with a top fine adjust. And I've been using this one for an awfully long time. And, uh, but you can see the range of sizes they have available there. Quite a nice range. But uh, this little one's what we're going to look at next. And uh, it's pretty much the same as what I just showed you the last time. Um, except it's got, it's got a mag base that turns off and on and no bottom adjust. This is just a top adjust uh, unit up here. And uh, let's pick, a, pick an indicator. Uh, this one's going to be uh, 15015, and we're just in a dovetail. And let's get down to the table. And the only drawback to this is we're out here doing our fine adjusts, out here in front, doing a fine adjust on our on our on our indicator. Now, and you know, just me moving this arm, I can influence. Uh, I can influence the arm and deflect the arm slightly, but you know, I mean, make no mistake, these arms lock up solid. But there's a lot of little things that come into play. There's there's still just the deflection of the of the uh, part. And if you're, you know, you know, God forbid, you got a tense indicator on there, and you're trying to do some little fussy measurement and try to take out that tenth, just deflecting the arm a little bit will, you know, will, you know, I'm moving it probably about a thou right there, just barely tapping it with my finger. And the advantage to this top adjust is, again, it's gonna work on a wall. You know, we're gonna get in over here on a, uh, on a vertical surface. And again, we can tweak it in and out on a, on a wall. 
which is nice. So it'll work horizontally or vertically. And this one has uh, pretty much the same type of holder. It's got the little spinning universal holder here, which is nice because we can take that dovetail, spin it around, and now we can go back to uh, you know a big dial indicator and uh, drop it in there. Okay, and uh, same thing, we can do it on, you know, vertically or horizontally. Um, I, use, I use this little one with these long travel indicators. These, these are nice. Um, being able to, uh, you know, uh, get some measuring done from a distance is uh, quite often handy when the actual indicator itself gets in your way. You know, you'd want to uh, get your indicator started. I got no way for you guys to look at this thing because it's going to be facing straight up. But uh, here, let me, let me lock this and get this in a little closer. But uh, my fine adjust, I've got, I've got adjustment there to, uh, um, you know, get my zero set. And you could also use this up against a wall, uh, possibly from a distance again. If you had, uh, you know, some obstructions in here or something, you can get in there with a long indicator and get set up against a, uh, against a vertical surface. And here again, we've got fine adjust here. Get you zeroed out and you can keep tweaking it around till you're nice and parallel with the, uh, or adjacent to what you're measuring. So handy little indicator, nice compact size uh, for getting in tight spots. And like I say, I need little, little fussy stuff for doing uh, shaft alignments and things like that. But some people are going to want some big ones. Um, and let's, uh, let's take a look at a, at, a, at a big dog. Okay, so next up we're going to take a look at these three arms. Uh, and I'm going to be showing you the MG uh, series. They've got an MG, a DG, and an NF. And these are all bottom adjusts with no fine adjust out on the tip. Uh, they make them in any combination, pretty much any conceivable combination. But uh, we're going to take a look at this uh, big dog right here. And you've probably seen some of my other videos where I use this, uh, use this one around the shop. And it certainly has its uses. It's uh, got a very strong magnet. Uh, it's a very rigid arm. It's a very large diameter arm. Uh, and if you've got the space to use it, absolutely use it. Let's bring this over. And uh, let's, uh, let's put our smallest, fussiest little uh, um, indicator on there. We've got a little tiny... Uh, we've got the YouTube uh, indicator with the, with the blue lens on it. So we'll just come down to the table and uh, get this guy down here and then we'll bring our fine adjust in and for a tense indicator for me to have that kind of control I just zeroed that thing first time off and then back to zero you'll hit that thing every time this fine adjust is just wonderful and uh, but if I was out here trying to doing a fine adjust out here you can see the arm deflection of me uh, you know playing with it and messing with it now uh, what this won't do is if I get in here on a wall again see I came in here on a wall as so I'm not gonna have the right kind of adjustment this base adjust is incapable of swinging so when I do when I fine adjust here I'm swinging in this axis. So what you would have to do is turn your magnet sideways. So your fine adjust is facing your facing your vertical surface. And I know you guys can't see this, but uh, but then you could come in here, and now I've got fine adjust into a vertical surface. So uh, this base adjust doesn't swing like the one I showed you earlier. But still a very nice holder, very rigid holder, large, got a great reach. Um, it's also, uh, it's got two, it's got one for the big uh, dial indicator and the dovetail. 
Uh, this is not the spinning type like you saw on the uh, fine adjust, but this will take a, uh, a regular dial indicator as so. And uh, let's get us into a, into a wall because you, you'll be able to see that. We'll come in here on a wall like this vertically and now we've got fine adjust here and pretty rigid setup see I'm moving about a thou plus or minus a thou with just deflection but still very solid very rigid very comfortable using this and uh, when you've got a tool like this it really increases your confidence that you're, get, you're taking good readings and you're you're satisfied with your readings and it make, keeps you happy I always say that okay we're happy with that we're happy with that reading. All right, so that is the MG series. And it, this is available in three sizes, according to the Noga catalog here, here, and here. Uh, very nice unit. All right, so let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, some other uh, pieces that you can buy, just by themselves. Uh, here's, here's one that I actually added uh, to my Square Master. Uh, the part number is an FA1500. And that's the just the little fine adjust with the spinning um, um, indicator holder where it'll take a big one or a dovetail or it's got three different sizes of indicator you can put on there. But it's just the fine adjust just by itself. And I added this one to my Square Master. Um, I'll insert a picture of that. Let's uh, put a picture of that right here. Okay, so that fit the Square Master really good, and it's it's been really handy on there. So I was I was real happy that they were I was able to get that by itself. And you can see here they've got just tons of parts. They've got fine adjust parts. If you if you do happen to lose a piece, um, they've got all these that are uh, uh, fine adjust here. Uh, they've got some uh, cant twist type clamps that already have a stem on them to mount a uh, um, a holder. Um, the arms just by themselves how awesome is that i mean you can get just an arm you want to mount a camera nothing better um i actually took one uh this was tom lipton's suggestion i married an indicol to a noga let's go take a look at that i'll show you what that does okay now what i'm going to show you here uh this is just an indicol uh, holding arm uh, but what i've attached to it is the uh the nf 1022 right here which has just got a plain stem on it. I think it's six millimeter stem. And uh, I adapted it right here. And it's all upside down right now because this is the way it would fit in the mill. This slips over the spindle of my mill. Uh, but I've got fine adjust out at the head and I can sweep parts with it. I, the big beauty of it is I can, without changing my tool, I can slip this over the, over the spindle and I can come in and I can spin turn the spindle and get centered on a part or I can just put it in rigid and uh, sweep a part you know so that's available just by itself just just the arm uh, but it does have a fine adjust but that's uh, an awful nice accessory if you don't need the mag base you don't need it so what a great little uh, holder that made alright let's see what else they got as long as we're poking through the catalog uh, we'll start out in front Uh, they come in three parts. They call it the top, the arm, and the base. Those are the, those are the components. Uh, these are all top adjust. With the fine adjust on top, no base adjust. Uh, four different sizes. Uh, these are all base adjust, no top adjust. Three different sizes. Um, these are the rod type and I think this is the economy style and I'm sure it's a quality product I don't have any experience with it so I can't attest to how they work in comparison to the other ones I, I'm not a fan of the rod type systems I've got a couple around here and they rarely get used usually they're for holding a camera or something else or coolant maybe uh, another rod system also their economy line these, this is the PH series. Um, 
Uh, here's uh, the NF that I showed you earlier. The NF comes in two sizes. One's a permanent magnet, one's a switchable magnet, but the arm is identical on both. So that's the NF series with the, with the little fine adjust down low. These are ones that come with a dial indicator. And I don't, I don't think Noga actually makes the dial indicator. Uh, it's a, just a rebranded thing. So I, I, can't, I cannot attest to the quality of their actual indicators. But these are packaged units that already have an indicator with them. Um, here's some more individual components. A can't twist type clamp uh, with, a, with a stem to mount an arm. Uh, here's a base, uh, a mag base that has, looks like it has M5, M8, M10, M12 uh, metric threaded holes in the top. So you've got a selection of what you can thread in there. Uh, here's three different sizes of magnets that already have the fine adjust at the bottom. And here's four different sizes of just plain magnets. So all that available by itself. You could probably pause that and grab a part number if you needed to. This appears to be a suction cup base, which is interesting. And then here's the arms just by themselves, just plain generic arms. Five different sizes. Um, this is this is something new, and I have it. I, I think I might order one of these. Uh, this is marketed as the new smallest and lightest arm on the market. It's an LC6100, and I think I'm going to look into one of those because I kind of like compact uh, for what I do. So I'm going to give one of these little guys a try uh, here in the near future. And again, with the accessories. Um, if anyone needs any in, any of this information or wants me to photograph it and uh, email them a particular page or a part number, I'll be happy to do it. Just uh, shoot me an email and I'll uh, I'll help you out with it. Okay, but that's the end of this uh, Noga tool holding system roundup. Uh, thanks for watching, you guys. They make stuff that I didn't even know was available. So uh, I in that video I kind of called out the the part numbers and I paused on the pages of that catalog so you can look at them and I actually got some of the ones that I was unaware that they made in that catalog so uh, I was able to do a review and, and, and go through all the different Noga stuff but Noga is gosh just top quality anyone that's used them knows um, but uh, yeah all right uh, last some some of you know that a set of parallels that I made here's a snapshot of them Um, have been MIA for quite some time. Uh, if you follow, you know, if we're friends with me on Facebook, uh, those were missing for oh, about eight or nine days in the, in the U.S. mail. And it was only going over two states to the east. It wasn't going that far. Uh, for Lord's sakes, I got stuff to Bruce Whitman in seven days. So uh, these parallels were MIA big time. And... Uh, and I use the word were because they finally showed up. They started showing some activity after the seventh day. They showed some activity way over in downtown LA, which is west of me. And then they were supposed to be going east. And usually stuff like that gets funneled through uh, City of Industry. So I don't know what happened there. But we started seeing some activity and some movement on the parts. And uh, Herodin has received uh, his parallels and nothing's damaged or broken and for that I am thankful. I was prepared to make another full set of parallels. I've already ordered the material, everything's here, I just haven't cut it up yet. I was kind of giving it a little bit of time to show and thank goodness it did. Um, that was a lot of material that would have just flown out the window otherwise. Alright, uh, that's the end of this week's update. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Herodin, I'm glad you got your parallels. Uh, everyone that sent me stuff and uh, did tool trades with me, thank you for a, a fair, honest, and uh, easy trade. I love my community. 
Uh, I love the honesty that everyone has. If someone says they're going to mail something, they mail it. If someone says they're going to PayPal something, they PayPal it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being such upstanding folks. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.